Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing awesome. I've been doing birthday party planning, so sorry I'm late. <clears throat> anyway, we are going to dive back into Psalms, and we're going to do Psalm 6 tonight. And so I'm glad that you could all make it tonight. And uh, let's see what God wants to say in his word tonight to us. And I think I'm going to read Romans 1 also. Just, um, I have, I have, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Romans 1, 16 on. So I would read Romans 1 started reading it this morning might have been in the U version I don't know this morning was so long ago so long ago all right well let's dive into some prayer you know what I am not going to say that anymore I got thinking about that and I thought that is not as respectful as I would like to be let's go before God and give him the reverence that he deserves. So let's lift up our petitions to God and not stumble into his throne room. Let's go humbly into his throne room. God, we just thank you and just please forgive us when we do not have the hum humility that you deserve, God. We don't treat you with the reverence that you deserve, God. Please forgive us. Forgive us of the times that we just stumble into your throne room, God, because you are so much more worthy than that. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. And you are so much more, God, because you are miraculous and powerful and mighty. And there is nothing that you can't do, God. There is nothing that's too hard for you. There is nothing that is beyond your scope of doing, God. And we just, we know, God, that you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You alone know all hearts and all minds. God, you are loving and kind and compassionate and caring and faithful. And God, you want none to perish. And that is why you were so patient. And you haven't sent Jesus yet because of your patience. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. God, we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we just pray for the lost. We just cry out for their souls, God. We pray for um, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, God, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God. We just pray for them to return to you and to repent and for you to reconcile their relationship. We pray also, God, for all the many disasters. I was looking at some videos today from Tennessee, and I know New York, and several places that got that hurricane had flooding. God, I just pray that you would be with these people and be with the people that are in the midst of other disasters, God. I just pray that they would Feel the presence of Jesus, that they would see that people would come and help them and be the hands of Jesus that they need. Be the loving compassion of Jesus and that you would just meet their needs, whatever they are. God, I pray for all these countries that are in uprising, that people just are not happy with their government, God. I just pray that you would be with them and that you would just help them. Maybe their government needs to wake up and realize that they work for the people, not the other way around. Too many governments have gotten to where they think that they have all the power, but really all the power belongs to the people. The 
people elect them, the people pay taxes so that they can work. And they just have gotten to where they just do not see things the way that they are. God, I just pray that you would continue to heal the sick, God, that you would give them strength. I pray also for um, all the people that have lost loved ones, God. I just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my friend Josie isn't here tonight yet. Sometimes she's a little bit late, but she'll she'll either get here or she may have something else to do tonight. If not, it is just me and you. And that is okay. That's okay. Either way. All right. I thought I heard my child going in here. He's got to be Phineas and Ferb. My child is going to be 18 tomorrow. I, I can't wrap my mind around it. I can't wrap my mind around it at all. Okay, let's see what Psalm 6 has to say. That is very short. It has seven verses. So I think that also I am going to read the names of God that are right next door. Okay, this is called a prayer of faith in time of distress. To the chief musician with stringed instruments on an eight-stringed harp. This is a psalm of David, a psalm of David. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver me. O save me for your mercy's sakes. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will give you thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All night I make my bed, I make my bed swim. I drench my couch with my tears. My eyes, my eye wastes away because of grief. It grows old because of my enemies. Yeah, that's Psalm 6. Okay, that's Psalm 6. That's kind of a sad, that's not really too uplifting. But let's read what my study Bible says about Psalm 6. You know, sometimes we are broken like that, like David is before God. And we do. Our, our tears drench our couch. And uh, we are sad and we have grief. And you know what? That is okay with God. You can take that to God. You can even at times be mad at God. And he's okay with that. He still loves you. I've been mad at God before, but I'm way over that. And But it's okay. We can take all of this. We can take all of this pleading, this time of distress, our times of distress, we can take to God. He understands. So let's read the seven penitential, penitential psalms. I don't know what that is. Recognized by the ancient church. Deal particularly with the nature of sin and forgiveness. The types of psalms. The psalmist appeals to God's gracious mercy because his bones were troubled. He in Hebrew, thought such suffering was greatly connected directly with sin. Therefore, the psalmist's petition for healing constitutes a plea for forgiveness. For God to hear the psalmist's prayer confirmed forgiveness and victory, shifting the mood of the person. In contrast to 
The psalmist did not assert his innocence, rather he appealed to the gracious nature of God for forgiveness. Journey to forgiveness, forgiveness, your path to freedom. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard my voice, heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. Oh, this is the, I'm sorry. This is the end of that psalm. I just realized that. Okay, this is the end of the psalm. Sorry, I didn't realize it. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. For the Lord has heard my voice of weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and greatly troubled. Let them turn back to be ashamed suddenly. All right, so that is the end of what we read in Psalm 6. And so I'm sorry. I didn't realize that it was part of the psalm. Okay, well, on this page also, I have the names of God. And the first one is Abba, and the description is Daddy, a diminutive to Father, Almighty, the all-powerful God, Ancient of Days. God is active in history, the everlasting God, the eternal God, Father, the first person of the Trinity, God, the Creator, God Most High, the Exalted One, the God who sees, the responder to needs, the Holy One of Israel, the set-apart God of Israel, Judge, the leader who pronounces judgment, Lord, the Master, Lord Yahweh, the personal most intimate name God assigned to himself. The Lord is my banner. Yahweh protects. That's also Yahweh Nisi. Um, the Lord of hosts. Yahweh of the armies. Yahweh Sab Sabuth. The Lord is peace. Yahweh Shalom. Yahweh is peace. The Lord will provide Yahweh, Yahweh Jireh, Yahweh provides the Lord of righteousness, Yahweh, oh, I cannot say this one, Yahweh Tzid, Tzid the Kinu, I don't know, I can't say it, the righteous one, the Lord is my shepherd, Yahweh, Yahweh Rohi, the God who provides love and care. Most High, the Exalted One. So, like I said, I have done these names before, but I didn't know this was in my study Bible. I may just put a marker in here. Oh, if I decide to do a study on the names of God, I already have them marked. Okay. Well, hi, my friend Josie. How was your day? Was it good? How are you feeling today? All right, well, I am going to move on to Romans 1. After reading Psalm 6, this Bible is so So Paul is the one that wrote Romans. And why I'm doing Romans 1 is because I read it this morning. And it's kind of a, a warning to unrighteousness. I think kind of what we have been, what we've been reading in Psalms, I think is Righteousness versus unrighteousness, a lot of it is that they do not follow your ways. They do not do this. They do not do that. And so this goes along with that. 
And it talks about some of the things that are happening right now that are unrighteousness. And I'm going to do a precursor. I did not write this Bible. This is written by God. So, because some of it on here, some of this on here could be offensive to some people. Um, I'm just, I'm just intending to tell truth. Okay, so this is, oh, you've been tired all day. I know my daughter has been too. She couldn't sleep last night, so she's been tired all day. Okay. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says, I have like a little heading, desire to visit Rome. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Making request, if by some means now at last, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you, for I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both to you and me. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Just live by faith, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's the t-shirt I have on today not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, and as, is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. God's wrath on unrighteousness. Again, I did not write the Bible, but it, it says very clearly that God sees this as sin and it's an abomination to him. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the, un of the incorruptible God into an image 
made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. And he's talking about making idols, making idols for man to worship. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to honor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to the vile passions for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immor immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. So in that list of things that are an abomination to God, I see a lot of that going on right now. I do. And if it was an abomination to God when he wrote his word, then it is still an abomination to God. So if you are caught up in any of this, then flee from it. Flee from it and seek God. Seek God's goodness. Seek God's grace. Seek Jesus as your Savior. So I'm not going to go into the study part of that because it will take a while. But we might dive into Romans one day and learn more about Romans 2. Oh, I hurt my hand. That Bible is so heavy. It hurts my hand. All right, let's see what we want to. Let's do this. I kind of like this. It's really short. It's called the Faith, Faith Visit Outline. And it is uh, by Lifeway, Church Resources. This is where we get a lot of our church material. It's from Lifeway. I don't know where I got this. I don't know. But um, let's see where I want to start here. Okay, so it says, key question. In your personal opinion, what do you understand it takes for a person to go to heaven? I'd like to share with you how the Bible answers this question. If that's all right, there is a word that can be used to answer this question. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. Um, F is for forgiveness. We cannot have eternal life in heaven without God's forgiveness. In him, meaning Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1, 7, A. A is for available. Forgiveness is available. It is available for all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 But it is not automatic. It's available, but not automatic. 
Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7, 21a. I. I is for impossible. It is impossible for God to allow sin into heaven. It's like that list of sin that we read a while ago. God is not going to he is not going to allow anyone that is stuck in that type of sin into heaven. We have to repent of our sins. God is love. John 3.16 Just, for judgment is without mercy. James 2.13a Man is sinful, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 but how, and this is a question, but how can a sinful person enter heaven where God allows no sin? So T, T is for turn. If you were driving down the road and someone asked you to turn, what would he or she be asking you to do? Change direction. Turn means repent. Turn from something, sin and self. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Luke 13, 3b. Turn to someone. Trust Christ only. The Bible tells us that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3b. In four, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So H, we have H. H is for heaven. Heaven is eternal. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10.10 10. H is for hereafter. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. John 14.3 H is for how. How can a person have God's forgiveness, heaven, and eternal life? And Jesus as personal Savior and Lord. Explain based on the leaflet picture. Faith. Forsaking all, I trust Him. Forsaking all, I trust Him. That's faith also. Um, in Romans 10, 9. So understanding what we have shared, would you like to receive this forgiveness by trusting in Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? I am going to do, there's really not a prayer that goes with that one. And I really like this prayer that I read last night. I thought it was simple. Okay, I liked it. It was very simple. So I'm going to say this prayer and repeat after me if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior. Jesus is the only path to heaven. There is no other way. So salvation, the time of salvation is now. And God keeps telling me every time I have quiet time, He is not, He does not care about the things of this world and what's going on. But what He does care is He cares about the people here that need to receive Jesus as their Savior. He cares more about salvation. He cares more that we spend time sharing His truth. He does everything in this world, whether we love it or not. I have a brand new computer. I love my brand new computer. But you know what? If Jesus comes tonight, I'm not taking it with me. Nothing, no possession that I have in my house, I am taking with me. When Jesus comes. So we need to learn how to let go of the things of the world. Because the things of the world will not last. The only thing that will last is eternal life. And the only way to receive re eternal life is through Jesus Christ. 
So I'm going to say this prayer and repeat it after me if you would like to be saved. This prayer doesn't save you. It is the belief. It is the belief in Jesus. It is the belief that God sent Jesus to die for us, to save us. Oh God, I know I am a sinner. I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me. I now receive him as my Savior. I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins, the gift of salvation, and everlasting life because of your merciful grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So if you accepted Jesus as your Savior and you said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. The angels are now rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his Son. And if you want to grow spiritually, then take some time and read the Bible every day and pray to God in praise. Find you some music that you can praise to. And so remember faith. Faith is forsaking all I trust. Wait a minute, where'd it go? Him. Forsaking all I trust him. Okay. Well, I am going to do God's blessing. I need to go get my son some food. I need to get myself some food. I came in and ate two bowls of watermelon. And I need some something other than that. Okay, so let's read number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So that's just, that blessing of God just makes me smile because he cares so deeply for us. He cares what we're going through. He cares, but he also wants us to be obedient. He also wants us to realize that we are on assignment as Christians until Jesus comes back. We are on assignment for God. Um, okay, Josie, what do we need to pray for? I got to get off of here pretty quickly. I'll pray for you not to be tired. Um, is the cough keeping you up at night? Because that happens a lot. And with COVID, you are tired. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and start praying. And uh, she'll put some prayer requests if she wants me to pray for something. God, we just thank you again. We are thankful and grateful, God, for all the many things that you do for us. God, I just pray for Josie that you will continue to heal her body and my daughter also. And that um, you would continue to heal others. And that you would um, continue to heal Mr. Mike. And we thank you that they are feeling better, God, but the cough just seems to hang on. So we pray for that too. Oh, my eye itches. We pray for um, Josie's sisters and their families and her brothers and their families and her children and their families. We pray for my family. We pray for my daughter and 
her family and um, our family, God. We pray for Austin. We just pray for protection and provision and blessings, God. And you are such a great provider, God. I just want to thank you for all the provisions that you've personally given me lately. God, I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful. God, we pray for our country. We pray for strength in our country. We pray for people to get saved in our country. We pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped, God. We pray for one nation under God once again like we had before. We pray for divisions to be unified, God, and for there to be unity once more. We pray for that for the whole entire world. We pray for wars, God, wars to just end. And we pray for um, all the disasters. We just pray for needs to be met, God. We pray for people that are um, have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We pray for boldness, God, boldness, God for us to unashamedly proclaim your truths, God and unashamedly share the gospel of Jesus to everyone. We just pray, God, for this disease that we see. Part of it is sin. Part of it is a medical disease, God. We pray for eradication of both. We pray for eradication of sin, God. We pray for people. The people will just repent, and they will return to you. That if they don't know you, God, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved, so that they can start a relationship with you. And we just praise you again for everything. I praise you for these last minute plans that I'm making for Saturday, God. We just pray that they will fall into place according to your will and your way and for your glory. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, Austin is sick. Is he sick with what you've had? Oh, he has a sore throat and has an appointment tomorrow. Okay, God, we just pray. We pray that all Austin has is allergies, God, because we know that allergies are rampant too right now. So we just pray for Austin that his throat would be better, and we pray for this appointment tomorrow, God. We pray that you would be with him and that he wouldn't have any fear, God, and that uh, all things would go well and that Josie would have no fear either, God, that you would just give her peace. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I feel like I forgot something. I don't know. Getting to where I have to write more things down so I don't forget them. Haley. Haley has a sore throat too. Okay, we'll pray for Haley too. God, we just lift up Haley to you and just pray that you would heal her body. We don't know what she has, but she has a sore throat, God. We just pray that this would be allergies because sometimes we do have sore throats with allergies. Sometimes we have coughs. Sometimes we have body aches. Sometimes uh, we have things that have the same symptoms as this disease, God. We just pray that you would be with her and her family and help them not to not to get sick. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What about your friend Maria? Is she okay? Do we need to pray for her too? God, we just lift up Maria to you as since Josie is sick, she's doing more work. God, please give her strength. Please give her strength to face every day and protect her from this disease. And in Jesus and her family and in Jesus' name, we pray that you would bless her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I added Maria in. I think that's all I can think of. All right, we'll pray and share warriors and Miss Josie. Ugh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I thought I would pray for her.
I know she's working more and uh, just to protection for her and that you would be strong enough to where you can go back to are you going to get tested tomorrow? All right. Well, I'm, I've got to get off of here and get Seth fed, and I'm getting hungry, too. My stomach's starting to hurt just because I ate only watermelon. That wasn't too smart, but I was hungry, and it was cold, and it was really good. Oh, uh, Amy, Amy needs prayers. Okay, Amy too. God, we just lift up Amy too that is doing more work too. God, please give her strength. Please bless her for the extra work that she's doing. And please uh, be with her and her family and protect her from this disease. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And P.S. God, and also Josie's other co-worker too, God, just be with them. Give them strength. Help them. To get through this hard time. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, y'all have an awesome rest of the night. An awesome tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I won't be here tomorrow night. I will be at youth. I'm not going to be AWOL like I was last Wednesday, hopefully. My plan is to be there. We'll see what God's plan is. But much love. And cyber hugs till I see y'all again. Good night.